Do different interpretations of the way rugby is refereed in the northern and southern hemispheres cause problems in international rugby? That is the subject that we're discussing with the panel, and it's also Martin Johnson's pet hate. <laughs> Jono, why are they being caused, do you think? I think, I mean, I can talk from an English point of view, and when I played, our referees would decide something almost standalone. Well, we'll referee this our way in the UK, in the English league, which is fine, but then we have to go and play test matches, and you're adapting to what's happening in the southern hemisphere. And one of the things is the competition at the breakdown, which is key, which we were great at. We then decided, I think, the referees, that they needed to stamp down on it. And now, in England, the competition at the breakdown is far less. And you go to a test match and you play against you know, the, the top sevens in the world, and suddenly they're, they're stopping our quick ball, and we're not stopping theirs. Simple, you know, is you lose the game if that happens. Or is it the bane of your life as well, John? Look, it's the biggest weakness of rugby. You know, the laws should be there to to administer the game, but at the moment we have people who are interpreting the laws and just taking their little slant on it. And that creates a lot of problems because the, the biggest thing holding the game back is people understanding it. Rugby is still not a mainstream sport around the world. Yeah, we have the same in, the, in England. The, the great thing about the World Cup for England, people would have watched the semi and definitely the final. Might have been the only game of rugby they ever watched and they were like... Might, this is fantastic. Yeah. But then you see them in the street and they'll say, what was the referee doing? Yeah. Go, we don't know something. And I'm going, well, I'm not too sure. Yeah. Well, I'm captain, I was captain of England and I'm mm -hmm. not too sure. You know, and you're right, you can't have a world, a huge world event that we've got and people going, actually, what's, what's going on? Yeah. So, you know, whatever the rules are, that we can debate that, but the consistency is the key. Why would the England Referees Society, whatever they're called, go and change the interpretation? Because our beers has an international standard. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You know when you see me on the pitch, Joel, and I'm getting all irate and going to referee? That's what I'm saying. I'm saying why would you referee this game differently from the IRB stuff? I mean, why don't we just have this integration about like having uh, referees from an all hand who go down and coach down there for like two months? I yeah, know, it, absolutely. It has happened a bit, but you see, you know, I watch a test match in the Southern Hemisphere, and the English guys, they're getting bagged by the commentators for, for being overly pernickety. But, but well, we, don't, we don't have that problem in the Southern Hemisphere when Tony Spreadbury or some of the Northern Hemisphere referees come down and referee. Generally, they're not They're generally bad. quite good. Yeah. yeah. OK, but I, you know, I see them sometimes go down and, and you think, well, you're refereeing that differently than you would mm. do at home. So forceful thoughts from the guys around the table, but do the inconsistencies in global refereeing need to be ironed out? Time for you to have your say.